I have been directed by the Spirit of God to minister from the series entitled Gifted and Unwrapped. Gifted and Unwrapped. For those that have been attending our 4D classes, this series is actually in alignment with the lessons dealing with the fact that each of us has been given gifts for the purpose of fulfilling the plan and the purposes of God to bring him glory and to serve others. Amazingly, y'all, God chooses to work through people <laughs> to accomplish his agenda. Amazingly, because we know us. But God says, I choose you. So his agenda, of course, is not simply on a natural level or in a natural realm. His agenda is both natural and spiritual. His agenda deals with the earth and the kingdom. Therefore, we cannot simply possess natural skills and talents only. We need God to put some super on our natural so that we can perform supernatural works that extend beyond the natural. And every now and then we need to be reminded that we cannot be satisfied with the knowledge that we are gifted. We have to be encouraged, stirred, and even compelled to unwrap the gifts. Turn to your neighbor, remind them, remind them, tell them you're gifted. <laughs> Look at someone else and tell them you're gifted. Uh-huh. But now look back and ask him, but are you unwrapped? N not are you uh, unwrapped in your mind. No, 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 stay wrapped, stay wrapped there. Are you unwrapped? So as we initiate the Gifted and Unwrapped series, we're going to walk through a pericope of scripture today in the book of Luke to just reinforce the fact that God has gifted you. He has given us everything we need so that we can emphatically declare and demonstrate that not only am I gifted, but I am unwrapped. And I want to borrow a phrase that my millennials um, may be familiar with uh, for the title of this message. Some of my older folk may know too. You know, we got some cool older folk, like right, Lady Kwame? Hey, amen, amen. We got some cool older folk that's on TikTok and... and uh, Amen. So the title of the message today is, I understood the assignment. Uh -huh. Help us, Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for your presence even here now. We ask God that you would move upon us, bless us, saturate us. Let your anointing rest upon us as we speak and as we hear. But we not only want to hear, but we want to be doers of your word. We thank you in advance for victory and to be, and to be able to declare we understood the assignment. In Jesus' name, amen. I understand the assignment. I understood the assignment has become um, a common phraseology, especially in current culture, those who are on TikTok, amen. I believe, uh, nephew, you know I'm always mess with you, so... Um, I believe the phrase started from a song by an artist named Tay Money. Now listen, nephew, I tried to listen to the song so I can get the rhythm of, you know, the message. Um, but that didn't go too well for me, nephew, now niece. Um, that, that, that didn't go too well for me. I had to immediately turn that song all the way off. Hallelujah. So then, I'm not condoning the song. I'm definitely not promoting the song. Because you're going to have to need to come to the altar after you hear that song. I'm just borrowing the phrase. I understood the assignment. I understood the assignment has become um, the popular way to give praise to someone who is winning. Someone who is doing a great job. I understood the assignment means that I accomplished whatever the assignment was. I rocked it out. I did it to the fullest. I made the assignment look good. <laughs> I understood um, the assignment um, just means that I knew what needed to be done. I did it, and I did it well. 
And I just want to remind all of you in the house that are listening and all of you online that God wants us to have the assignment that, or the testimony I understood the assignment. Everybody, every believer has an assignment. Remember, God chooses, amazingly, he chooses to work through people to complete God-given assignments, to accomplish his will. And because God is such an amazing God, he's a good God, he's a kind God, he hasn't just given us an assignment, he has also given us special abilities called gifts to carry out and fulfill the assignment. He has given us charismata from the Greek word charis, meaning grace. He's given us grace gifts, spiritual gifts or endowments. Um, please note that as believers, we receive the spirit of God as a gift. Remember in the book of Acts 2.38, Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift gives gifts. It's the Holy Ghost that gives gifts. These gifts are above and beyond your natural ability. They are pneumaticos, which simply means that the origin of these gifts, the origin is the pneuma or the spirit of God, the breath of God. So when the spirit resides and indwells in us, we are then given spiritual gifts. And the number one reason why we have spiritual gifts is to glorify God. First and foremost, then to serve. There is no believer that is ungifted. Shout, I'm gifted. I I'm gifted. So these grace gifts then empower us to fulfill and carry out our assignments in ways that are productive, powerful, with precision, and even supernatural. However, even though we're gifted, the challenge is, um, like, look at these boxes here. Aren't they pretty? Uh -huh. Challenge is even though the box is beautifully wrapped, <laughs> looks pretty, you want to place it under the tree, <laughs> nice red bow. The problem is we cannot access the gift or the purpose of the gift or the power of the gift, or the productivity of the gift, unless the gift is unwrapped. Shout, I'm gifted. <laughs> but the question is, are you unwrapped? Huh. Listen, the church, please hear me. The church must hear the criticality of the call to enter into 2022 as gifted and unwrapped. We have to have an ongoing, continual, perpetual testimony. I understood the assignment, which means we accepted the assignment. We knew what needed to be done. We did it and we did it well. But um, permit me to share a story that I heard that reflects the challenge that the church is facing today. There were four people four people. Their names were everybody, say everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. Mm -hmm. So there was an important assignment. There was an important job to do and everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it but nobody did it. So somebody got angry because it was everybody's job, but everybody thought anybody would do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. 
I need y'all to hear this story one more time. Let me, let me say it again. We have everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There's an assignment, an important assignment. Everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. But somebody got angry because it was everybody's job. But everybody thought anybody would do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. In other words, everybody blames somebody when anybody could have done what nobody did. Clearly, they didn't understand the assignment. All of this is to say that there are too many unwrapped gifts within the church. God is depending on us to declare and demonstrate, not just to declare I'm gifted, but to demonstrate that we are gifted and unwrapped. And to fulfill the call upon our lives with the testimony, I understood the assignment. You are critical. I need you to hear God. You are critical to the advancement of God's purpose and plan. You matter to God. You matter to God. He has ensured that not only are you called, but you are qualified to fulfill the assignment on your life. And what makes it even more critical is that your assignment is bigger than you. So when you fail to fulfill the assignment, it not only affects you, but it affects those that you were assigned to serve. You've been assigned to serve somebody. And God wants you to know, listen, Beyond the shadow of a doubt, beyond your own low self-esteem, beyond your feelings of unworthiness, beyond your mess ups and your failures, beyond all the stuff that your humanity includes, because God ain't afraid of your humanity. Beyond all the stuff, you matter to God. Tell your neighbor, in spite of all your stuff, don't act like you ain't got no stuff. In spite of all your stuff, you matter to God. He has called you. <laughs> he has gifted you and he wants to unwrap you so that you can fulfill your assignment. He calls, he equips, and he sends. That sounds like a good little tune. He calls, he equips, and he sends. Say it with me. He calls, he equips, and he sends. Now I want you to add me to it. He calls me, he equips me, and he sends me. Because we don't want to get mad at the everybody and nobody and the anybody and the somebody that nobody and nobody did nothing. No, he calls me. No, no, it's personal. He calls me. He calls me, he equips me, and he sends me. And I have Bible to back it up. Mm -hmm. So let's walk through the scripture. Please turn to the book of Luke chapter 9. I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. So just follow along with me. Luke chapter 9, we're going to start with verse 1. Because he calls, he equips, and he sends. He calls me equips me and sends me. Jesus summoned together the 12 apostles and imparted to them authority over every demon and the power to heal every disease. Let's start right there exe exe and exegete the text. He summoned them. What's that mean? He called them. Called them together. Um, that called, it means kaleo from the Greek word kaleo, meaning he has kaleoed us, every one of us. Not one person in here has not been kaleoed by God. He has called us 
and he has given us an assignment. So he summoned them together and then the Bible says he imparted to them, which means he gave them something. He gave them or he gifted them or he equipped them. He equipped them with what? He equipped them with what they needed for what he called them for. <laughs> He equipped them for the assignment. Um, you know the saying that uh, uh, God doesn't call the qualified. He, he qualifies the call. What did he give them? The Bible says he imparted unto them. I need you to pay close attention because what he gave them is exactly what he gives you. He gifted them. Equipped them. Number one, with authority over every demon. Authority is the Greek word exousia. The granted privilege, listen, to exert power over. It's the right, listen, to give orders to. <laughs> Parents, we have exousia over our kids. Amen. We have a right to give orders until they get grown. But the Bible says, listen, he gave them authority over every demon, every demonic force. Can I remind you, please, that God has called you and given you the right to give orders to the devil? You can tell the devil, shut up and get out of my face. Whew, sorry, I felt good. When you were growing up in my house, we didn't say the word shut up. You didn't hear the word shut up when you came over to the Randall home. You didn't say, my, my kids weren't allowed to say shut up. To one you didn't say shut up. But I promise you, I would tell the devil to shut up in a minute. Shut up! Stop talking to me. Sometimes you got to just tell, don't tell your spouses. I'm not saying that. Don't tell your kids. I'm just saying, tell the devil. Shut up and get out of my face. Doesn't just give them authority. Listen. He says he gives them authority. He also gives them power to heal every disease. He gives them dunamis, dunamis, dunamis. That's the dynamite power of God to blow up the works of the enemy. To blow up, blow up every disease that's coming against you. I, I, I'm reminding myself. And I need us to recognize that God has equipped us with power which is capacity, competence, influence, ability, stamina, and dominion. Remind yourself that because you have been gifted by God, you have capacity, competence, influence, ability, stamina, and dominion. You can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil if you've been on that altar and got yourself together. I, I don't recommend that you do it if you know you ain't prayed up. Just, 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 just let somebody go before you. We trying to stand against devils and we don't have no power. Hallelujah. I just want to remind you that he gave his disciples authority and power. Are you a disciple today? He has given you authority and power. He called. He equipped. Verse number two, then he commissioned them to proclaim God's kingdom and to heal the sick to demonstrate that the kingdom had arrived. As he sent them out, he gave them instructions. So he called them, he kaleoed them. He gave them authority, exousia. He gave them power, tunamis. And then he sent them. Can you say it with me again? He calls me. He equips me. He sends me. There it is. He commissioned them. He gave them an assignment to do what? To spread the gospel and to heal and serve the people. God uses people to fulfill his agenda. He sent them. Apostoleo, apostolic, the apostles. Remember. He calls, he equips, and he sends. Um, but listen to verse number three. Bible says, take nothing extra on your journey. Mm -hmm. Just go as you are. Don't carry a staff, a backpack, food, money, not even a change of clothes. Lord, what? 
listen at the Lord talking to you. Because there are some assignments that don't have nothing to do with the natural. So you can use natural means to accomplish the assignment. There are some assignments that are supernatural. Please understand that you have spiritual gifts to fulfill spiritual assignments. Too many of us are trying to fulfill spiritual assignments with natural gifts. Uh, that ain't going to work. The devil will look at you and laugh. Uh, okay. We have to make sure we are operating in the spiritual gifts. So then God gives them spiritual gifts. Don't, don't, don't take any of that stuff because you're not really going to need that. Read the text. The, the assignments that God is leading us into, into 2022, requires spiritual gifts. And you have to realize that, 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 that everybody, listen, you have some gifts that are wrapped up in you that you have not accessed yet. you got to open up. Let God unwrap you and draw out what he already put in you. Uh, can't see well, but the problem is that um, um, if they had told us to take not take any food, we would have a problem right there. What, what you want me to eat, God? And if they told me to not take any shoes, clothes, I, what, what, what you what you what you want me to do, God? Because He's challenging our carnal thinking. Because everything is not about material stuff. There are some assignments that you're on that lead to the supernatural spiritual. There are assignments that you have as a CEO to open up your mouth and tell of the kingdom of God to your boss or to your um, subordinates because somebody in their home needs a miracle like Brother Stacy's brother. That ain't about um, those facts and figures and budgets. That's about opening your mouth and allowing God to speak through you because something in the, in the spiritual is needed. Come on here. So some of the assignments God is taking us into requires the altar, requires prayer. <laughs> Sometimes people are just satisfied with being wrapped up because um, uh, uh, to be unwrapped means it's going to take you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be unwrapped means that it's going to um, interfere with your regularly scheduled programming. Uh, to be unwrapped means you're going to have to turn your plate over. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're going to have to come out to prayer. You, you, you're going to, I will park there right now, but I'm going to say that for another day. You have to come out to prayer. This is a house of prayer. You're going to have to give up something. You're going to have to give up some of your time. You're going to have to give up some of your money. You're going to have to give up some of your talent. It's going to cost you something. So people say, uh-uh, I don't, uh, uh no, I'm good. I'm good, just like this. Just set me there. I'm just coming to sit down. There it is. I'm, I, look, look, don't look. Don't I look cute? Come I'm beautiful. But your assignment, because you thought somebody else was going to do it, but nobody did it because it's assigned to you. Um, so then, so then, don't take any of that stuff. I need you to depend exclusively on me. Listen to what he says. Whatever home welcomes you as a guest, remain there and make it your base of ministry. Whenever, wherever you are given the liberty to operate in your gift and fulfill your assignment, abide there. <laughs> and wherever your ministry is rejected, you are to leave that town and shake the dust off your shoes as a testimony before God. Please hear me. Everyone in your assignment uh, um, um, will, will experience some rejection at some point. It comes with the territory. There is going to be trouble. He's letting them know, listen, everybody's not going to like you even though I've given you the assignment. Every God-given assignment is not liked by folk. But it is your God-given assignment. He says, listen, you're going to have some trouble along the way. But you can't handle the trouble with backpacks and shoes and, and natural food. No, that's not how you're going to handle it. Jesus said, everybody's not going to like you. But don't let that cause you to abort your assignment. 
Everybody's not going to agree. But don't let that cause you to abort your assignments. If you are in a place where you cannot discover your gifts, develop your gifts, demonstrate your gifts, and be deployed as the gift, the Bible says, leave that place. Leave that house. Leave that church. Shake the dust off your shoes. You might listen, listen, because, because all those leaves, <laughs> that ain't comfortable. That, that, that don't feel good. So, 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 so God is saying, listen, you might have to shed some tears sometimes. You, your feelings are going to be hurt. It, 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 it's going to happen. But I said, shake the dust off your shoes. God has an assigned place that will value who you are. God has an assigned place that will value who he has called you to be. So then we get to verse 6. The Bible says, the apostles departed and they went. They went because they were sent. Okay. Yeah, I just want to pause right there. They went because they were sent, not because they just chose to go. Sometimes when we just choose to go, we go in our own power because God didn't send you. When God sends you, he equips you for the sent place. When God sends you, he not only equips you for the sent place, but he equips you for the sent process. So the apostles departed and went into the villages with the wonderful news of God's kingdom and they healed diseases wherever they went. Listen, they operated in their gifts. They were actively engaged in their gift. The disciples, what? They understood the assignment. Can I remind you or inform you? God has a unique fingerprint on you. It's your essence, which makes you the unique you that you are. There, um, there has never been a you. And there will never be another you. So therefore, um, you should not go unnoticed and, and unwrapped. Because, because we should, we should want to be revealed and celebrated. No doubt, listen, these disciples encountered, you don't think they encountered resistance? They were working in a new regime. They were sent to talk to Jews who did not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. You don't think they received resistance? They were ushering in a new covenant, a new way. They were trying to build something new from the ground. You don't think that they experienced resistance? Absolutely, they did. We're going to experience resistance. But they understood. They understood the assignment. How do you know, Pastor? Well, skip down to verse number 10. They understood the assignment because the Bible says months later, months later, the apostles returned from their ministry tour. And they told Jesus, listen, all the wonders and miracles they had witnessed. Listen, they were called, they were equipped, they were sent, and they understood the assignment. Because they came back and gave an account of their assignment. Can I please remind you that um, we all have to give an account? We're going to have to give an account. So, so, so whether you want to stay wrapped up in the box with the beautiful bow, you're going to still have to give an account for what's inside, what God put in you. They gave an account. Will you be able to speak when you give an account? Will you be able to speak of the wonderful miracles, the wonders? Will you be able to say, I understood the assignment? Because see, 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 here, here's a testimony of I understood the assignment. Here's a testimony. When discouragement tried to derail me, I understood the assignment. When, 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 when those you thought would be with you but are no longer with you, 
but you continue to serve. That means I understood the assignment. When those that started off with you, but fell off, but you stayed true to the call, not for the accolades of men, but because of the acceptance and affirmation of God, then you can testify. I understood. I understood the assignment. When disappointed, but still determined, I understood the assignment. Because the assignment is not always comfortable, Lady Kuan. The assignment is not always easy. The assignment is downright hard sometimes. You will be ridiculed. Sometimes threatened. And if not by man, absolutely by the devil. Who will threaten you? You, you think you're going you you to accomplish this? You think? I understood the assignment. Mm, I, I'm done. I, I'm almost done. I, I just want to talk to you. But listen, I, I was listening to a message. I love good preaching, y'all. One of my all-time favorite preachers is Dr. Carolyn Showell. My sister stepped out. I was going to ask her. She remembers when Bishop Widener would bring, and it wasn't a dynamic duo, but this trio of women to Youngstown, yes, Ohio. Remember. They were the most prolific, profound women I had heard. Dr. Carolyn Showell, Bishop Iona Locke, and Bishop Jackie McCullough. Those women? Woo! Oh, my God. But I was listening to Bishop Carolyn Showell. And listen, please hear me. God knows how to put you in a place to hear something because faith cometh by hearing. He knows how to put you in a place to hear something because he knows you're going to need it even when you don't know you're going to need it. I was listening, I was listening to her preach at Bishop Jake's church and she said something so profound. She said, God will employ a crisis. God will hire a crisis to get you to your place of purpose. She said, don't waste your crisis. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, don't waste the crisis because God employed the crisis to get you to where you got to go. We have to look at what the crisis was employed to do. We can become trapped in a box, wrapped in fears, wrapped in lack of discipline, wrapped in the lack of drive and momentum, but then God will employ a crisis. Ooh, he will allow some uncomfortable situations to occur to shift us into destined places. Anybody experienced a crisis before? Um, the crisis was employed by God and assigned to shift us to another level of purpose. The crisis was assigned to put some fire up underneath our Crisis was a sign to put some fire underneath our behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get up and perform, produce, possess at the level of your fullest potential. After I heard the message, I was just enjoying the message. Oh, that's good. Yes. Hallelujah. I didn't realize I was going to be faced with the crisis in the next two days. And I had to have my own come to Jesus meeting. Anybody ever had a come to Jesus meeting? I had to say to myself, uh, because although I'm the pastor, there's more to Carla than pastoring. Y'all ain't got to agree with me. So I can't let pastoring put me in a box. Mm -hmm. You can't let your position put you in a box. You can't let your CEO status put you in a box. Your ministerial status put you in a box. Your ushering status put you in a box. There's more to you. You just have to unwrap. There's more that God put in you. There's room for expansion. And in 2022, I just believe that God is preparing to enlarge our territory. 
And every now and then, God will have to hire a crisis to shake you and shift you, unwrap something that has already been put in you, but you didn't realize it was there. You forgot. <laughs> I'm suggesting to you today, please don't waste your crisis. Every opposition is an opportunity for growth. Every affliction can advance you. Every disappointment can be the driving force to your destiny. It's all about if you understood the assignment. Let nothing or no one stop you from fulfilling the assignment, not even yourself. Testify with me. I understood the assignment. No, I didn't hear you. I I'm suggesting that right now you are being prepared. The gift is already in you. The stage is being set and your performance is not next. No, your performance is now. God wants to have the testimony, wants us to have the testimony. We understood the assignment. I've accepted the call. I'm operating in what God equipped me with. I'm committed to fulfilling the assignment. And when I give an account, I will tell him, sir, I understood. I understood the assignment. I'm done. I want to pray with all the folk that are striving to understand the assignment. I want to pray with folk who want the testimony. I understood the assignment. I accepted it. It's hard. It ain't easy. But I accepted it, and I'm going to do it. And I, not only am I going to do it, I'm going to do it well. Ain't nobody with me this morning. I understood the assignment, meaning I know there are things coming against you. But will those things derail you or will they drive you, push you to the place of destiny? Will you use the opposition, the opposing factors? Will you use all the demonic forces to catapult you to a place called prepared, called promise, a place called purpose? Will you? Will you be able to say to God, you called me, Lord, you equipped me, Lord, you sent me, Lord, and I understood the assignment, which means I can stand up before God and say, God, it wasn't easy. And I had to cry sometime and it didn't feel good. And I sometimes didn't know if I was going to make it. Sometimes didn't even want to make it. I'm done, God. But no, 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 because I understood the assignment. The criticality of my yes. The criticality of your yes to the assignment. I understood. Not only did I understand it, I'm walking in it against all odds. Why? Because he already equipped me with what I need to complete the assignment. Isn't that wonderful about God? He doesn't just give you an assignment and leave you to yourself. He gives you what you need to fulfill the assignment. Sometimes you just got to tap in and let him unwrap you so that you can realize that everything you need, you got it. He will give it to you. He's not that kind of God that just throw you out there and leave you out there on your own. No, he says, no, I'm going to equip you. I'm going to give you authority and power. I'm going to give you the ability to speak it and to do it. Come on here. I'm just talking today. We don't even need it. Gifts unwrapped. I understood the assignment. I want to pray. Come on, get up on your feet. I want to pray for those who want to remain committed to the assignment. You said you believe God. I'm saying you matter to God. I'm saying that God has chosen you specifically and exclusively to complete and fulfill an assignment. It's not going to always be easy. What is? But because he has equipped you, you can make it. You can do it. You can perform it. You can fulfill it. 
and then you can declare, stand tall and say, I understood the assignment. Come to the altar, those who want us to pray with you, that God will enable you to recognize all that he has given you so that you can complete the assignment. He's counting on you. You may not ever stand behind this lectern up on this pulpit, but you have an assignment. You may not ever sing like my sister, Lady Precious, Lady Merrill, Lady Centralo. You may not, but you yet have an assignment. Please don't compare your assignment to anybody else's. God kaleo you, meaning he called your name specifically. And he has given you an assignment specifically. And he has given you, equipped you, gifted you specifically. It's specific to the assignment. Because he loves you. And he cares. He's not a God that will leave nor forsake you. So I want you to get on your mind what you believe your assignment is. And the majority of us have more than one assignment. Assignments can even change as you grow. But even in the transition of the change, let God open you up and unwrap you. Don't stay stuck in the last revelation of who you are. <laughs> Don't stay stuck in the, in the last revelation of God. There's more. I know that you are the greatest singer. But do you know that there's something else on the inside of you as well? Don't get stuck. Let him open you up. So that you can declare, I understood the assignment. Get it on your mind what you want God to do, what you need God to do. And I want you to make the commitment to the assignment. I'm going to give you a few moments to just talk to God yourself. Some of us need to renew our commitment. Renew your commitment to prayer. Renew your commitment to reading the word. Renew your commitment to talking about Jesus. Just say something nice about him sometime. When you step into your office, let people know, God did this for me. God opened this door for me. <laughs> Come on. There's an assignment. Everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it. But nobody did it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody. When nobody did what anybody could have done. That's not our testimony. Our testimony is... We understood the assignment. We received it. We were equipped for it. We did it. And we did it well. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for how you have amazingly chosen each one of us. You know every part of us, God. And yet you still call us righteous. You still call us your beloved. You still think thoughts of peace toward us. You don't change your mind. We thank you today, God, because here we are standing at the altar, recommitting, reconnecting, 
remembering the assignment. We all come, Lord. And we ask now in Jesus' name that you would continue to bless us. Even right now while we're standing, breathe afresh upon us. Whew. Awaken us, God, to the fact that you have called us, equipped us, and sent us. You have given us an assignment. And God, we've stepped out trying to do it. Sometimes we falter, we've fallen down, but we are getting back up. <laughs> We're committed, God. We commit to it. We know that we're going to have adversity. It's not always going to be easy. But as we're standing at this altar, I pray, Father, that you would infuse these people with authority and power. Cause them to remember that you have equipped them for the journey. Yanasha, that no matter what they face, they're not facing it alone. That you are with us, God. Hmm. That you haven't just equipped us to for the journey. You've equipped us, God, to possess the promise. And so, Father, we want to stand and testify that we understood. We understood the assignment. Give us, Lord, the strength, the capacity, the stamina. Give us, Lord God, the commitment, the, the wherewithal. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know what everyone stands in need of. You know right where we are. And we thank you that we're able to come to you in our own way. In our own way and say, sir, I need your help. Sir, I want to do it, but I need your help. So, sir, I want to be committed, but I need your help. Sir, I believe, but please help my unbelief. Sir, I know that I'm gifted. Please unwrap me. Help me, God, to not hold on to all of the material, all of the natural. Help me to grab onto the spiritual. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask, Lord, that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness, any way that we have offended you, forgive us. And as we leave this altar today, help us to know that you have forgiven us, that you have afforded us another opportunity, that you are with us and you're counting on us. But you have a reason to count on us because you know what you've put in us. <laughs> you already know that we can make it. Help us to believe it. It is so. We've been called. We've been equipped. We've been sent. And God, you are with us. It is so. We declare we understood the assignment. We will do it. And we will do it well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise as you go back.